Welcome to an aero terminology video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. If you are new to the channel, let me tell you a little bit about these aero terminology videos that I've been making. The purpose of these videos is to supplement the design videos that we're doing. What we will do in the design videos is refer back to the aero terminology videos so we don't have to over and over describe some of the terminology that can be a little bit involved. If you'd like to see any more of these aerial terminology videos, there's a playlist on the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about an aircraft's neutral point. What inspired this video, and the reason you might want to know about the neutral point, is that I was working on the horizontal tail design of the UWS-1 Ultralight. And when you're working on a horizontal tail design, your primary concern is stability of the airplane, the longitudinal stability of the airplane. In this case, I'm talking about a conventional configuration where you have a big wing up front and a smaller horizontal vertical tail after the big wing. So in the design of the horizontal tail, what you're really interested in is how far back behind the main wing the tail is and what the surface area for that tail should be. Now, one way of handling this, and it's a little bit cheating, is to multiply that arm, which is the distance between the main wing and your horizontal tail, you multiply that by the surface area of tail, and that gives you something called a horizontal tail volume. And so one way to design that tail and get those values is to look at aircraft that's similar to your aircraft that you're designing, find out what their horizontal tail volume is, and then use it for your airplane. And you can probably get away with that. And in fact, a lot of the amateur design books talk about doing that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to get into a little bit more detail so we are a little more comfortable with our design. So in order to do that, we need to get into static stability. And I'm going to make an aero terminology video on static stability, the longitudinal static stability. But part of figuring out that longitudinal static stability is finding the neutral point for your airplane. The definition of the neutral point for an airplane is that point on an airplane, and in this case, it's going to be a point on the x-axis, where the x-axis is the line that goes from the front of the airplane to the back of the airplane. Along that axis of the airplane, there's going to be some point where the pitching moment of the airplane as a whole is independent of the angle of attack of the airplane. In other words, as the airplane changes its angle of attack, that pitching moment, and in this case we're talking about the aerodynamic pitching moment, stays roughly the same. I mean, it will change a little bit, but it's roughly constantly the same. That does not include the pitching moment due to the weight of the airplane. We're, in this case, we're just talking about the aerodynamic portion of the pitching moment. What I'm using for my reference in this video is an article that was in Kit Plains magazine back around 1985. It was written by Donald R. Crawford, and he put a series of articles that he wrote in Kit Plains into a little publication that he calls Airplane Design. And I'm particularly interested in part two, which is Introduction to Static Stability and Control. We know what the neutral point is, but how do we find it? How do we calculate it? Well, the neutral point, and by the way, neutral point is also sometimes called the aerodynamic center of the airplane. The neutral point is the weighted average of the various aerodynamic centers of the horizontal flying surfaces on the airplane. So that'd be a canard, that'd be the horizontal tail, that'd be the wing. And weighted average basically means you're averaging based on mostly the surface area of those horizontal surfaces. So in other words, the main wing, the big wing, would have the most weight in determining the neutral point. A canard and a horizontal tail behind the main wing won't have as much impact on the neutral point. There are some things that reduce stability, and that happens when the neutral point is moved forward, closer to the center of gravity. And things like that are the nose of the airplane, uh, tractor propellers where the propeller is forward of the center of gravity. Now you can also increase stability by moving that neutral point aft away from the center of gravity. And things that increase the stability that move the neutral point back would be things like pusher propellers that are behind the center of gravity, nacelles, uh, the fuselage that's after the center of gravity. Now if these surfaces the fuselage fore and after the CG or your propellers, they don't have that much impact on the neutral point. 
So in our case, we can ignore it. We, our fuselage is only as wide as the pilot. That's pretty narrow. We can pretty much ignore it. If we had a really wide body or a lifting body or something like that, then it's really important and you would have to include it in your calculation. But since we're designing small, light aircraft, we can pretty much ignore it. I want to use a diagram to help explain a little bit of what we just talked about. There's more in here than we really need for the neutral point. This diagram was created to help with the static stability, but we'll have to ignore some of this. So we talked about the aerodynamic center of our flying services. In this configuration, this is a, a fairly common configuration where you have a main wing up front, fairly large, and then a horizontal tail behind to provide your stability and your pitch control. Now each of these services has an aerodynamic center and they're usually considered to be at the quarter cord. So a quarter way back on the cord from the leading edge. So this is an aerodynamic center for the horizontal tail. This is the aerodynamic center for the main wing. I've also put a neutral point, which is also sometimes called the airplane's aerodynamic center on here. And the neutral point is going to be somewhere for an aft, but it's generally going to be somewhere around the 30% cord, 33% cord of the main wing. Center of gravity is generally going to be in front of your neutral point. And we'll get to that when we get to the stability analysis. And you're always going to measure these points, the neutral point, center of gravity, aerodynamic centers, from some reference point. So use the same reference point for all of these. In this case, the reference point being used is the leading edge of the main wing. So the aerodynamic center of the main wing is going to be some distance from that point. Center of gravity is going to be some distance from that point. Neutral point will be some distance from that reference point. And of course, the tail aerodynamic center will be some distance from that point. And we'll need to know these distances to do our calculation to get the neutral point location. I've already mentioned a couple times this neutral point is being determined for the static stability, longitudinal static stability. And I'm going to make a video about that longitudinal static stability, but it would be good to really briefly here talk about where that neutral point has to be relative to the center of gravity to have a stable airplane. And at that CG, center of gravity, has to be forward of that neutral point. If you have it forward, you'll at least have a statically stable airplane. If your center of gravity is at the neutral point, you have something called neutral stability. And you can fly the airplane when it's neutrally stable, although you probably will not be able to keep it in a trimmed condition. In other words, be able to fly it hands off. Any little bump, for example, a gust, that upsets the orientation of the airplane, the airplane will tend to kind of stay in that orientation and won't come back to a straight and level flight. But if your center of gravity is after your neutral point, your airplane is unstable. Now, if it's only a little bit aft, you can probably still fly it, but you'll have to fly it continuously. When your CG is aft the neutral point, any upset will tend to diverge and become more upset and diverge farther and farther. Now, the further back you are behind the neutral point with your CG, the worse that is. And at some point, it's just completely unflyable. If it's just barely behind the neutral point, you can probably still fly it, but it's going to be a lot of work. So that's why it's important to know where our neutral point is on the airplane. Well, how are we going to find that neutral point? Well, now we get into some scary math stuff. And if you're not interested in the math, that's fine. But this really is, even though it looks intimidating, it's very, very simple, especially since we've only got two horizontal flying services. And if you uh, don't remember all of your math from high school, let me quickly go over what some of this means. This symbol means you're going to sum up some terms. It's a Greek sigma. And so what we're going to do is for every flying surface, we're going to do this calculation. And then we're going to sum up those calculations. And then also on the bottom, we're going to do this calculation for each flying surface and then sum them up. Once we have those two sums, we just divide them and that'll give us our neutral point. So let's get into a little bit more on the detail. This X is the position of aerodynamic center of a lifting surface from that reference that we just got done talking about. So the main wing would have an aerodynamic center from the reference surface. And in this case, I was using leading edge, so it'd be the 
quarter chord point of that mean aerodynamic chord. This one's a little bit harder, but not bad. You'll probably remember from your math in high school that you can determine the slope of a line, which is rise over run. So you've got some distance rise, and I'm gonna use this 0.4, which you probably can't see, but this is a 0.4 line here. Here's the 1.0 line here. So that's 0.6 difference. And then that would be the rise and then overrun. So this is zero here and this is five. So in order to get the slope, we take 0.6, divide it by five, and that'll give us the slope of the line. And that's basically what these D's out here mean. We wanna know what the slope of the line is. Somewhere down in here is where you're gonna to try to figure out the slope of the line. And this particular line we're looking at is the coefficient of lift, and we've done an arrow terminology video on that, over the angle of attack. That's what alpha means. And we've also talked about that in an arrow terminology video. And that's what this graph over here is. This is coefficient of lift over angle of attack in degrees. So basically, we just want to know what the slope of that coefficient of lift over angle of attack is for that particular wing. You have to be a little bit careful. This is not the section coefficient of lift. This is the wing's coefficient of lift. I'm not gonna get into how you do the coefficient of lift of a section and convert it to a wing. Although if you wanna look at Crawford's article, he's got some uh, code in there to show you how to do it. But it's, it's not too bad. I'm not gonna to get to it in this video. This is the effective surface area of the wing. It's not the total surface area. This is actually the total surface area minus area that's occupied by the fuselage. So they're calling that the effective surface area. This eta, you can ignore it. It's just basically one. If we get into a little more advanced, a little more detail, what this eta is represents how the tail surface dynamic pressure is changed by a horizontal surface that's in front of it. In other words, the tail will be in the wake of the main wing, which changes the dynamic pressure on the tail. But it is a tiny amount, so we're just not gonna worry about it. We're gonna use one. K is a correction factor for the fuselage. Now you might think that you've already taken care of it here, but you haven't. And we'll talk about it down here. Uh, K is calculated by the width of the fuselage divided by the span of the flying surface. And then you add one to that and then square it. Now it'll give you a correction factor. So when you break it all down, it's pretty darn simple. Then you sum all these up for your flying surfaces. Down here, it's the same thing, except you leave out the reference location of your flying surface. You sum all these up, divide, you got your neutral point. This would be pretty easy to do if you want to do it with a spreadsheet. I'm going to uh, go a little bit beyond that, and I'm writing this little program to help me do it that will have a nice little user interface. And I'm going to have it be able to run through various ranges of surface area and your lift curve slope and reference points. And so it'll make some little nice little graphs so I can easily play around with these numbers and, and see what I'm going to get. Well, like I said, I'm going to work on a static stability aerial terminology video, and that'll actually go into how you use your neutral point to calculate your stability. Don't forget there's a playlist of these aerial terminology videos. I'll put a link to that playlist here. And don't forget, we also have plenty of other videos on designing of the UWS-1 ultralight airplane and a lot of fun videos on making composite samples that we're going to test for putting on the ultralight airplane.